Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where OP's wife steals all their money and just vanishes. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash relationship advice. I'm a 24 year old woman and I found out that my husband, who's 35, made a disgusting bet with his friends when he met me and now I can't see him the same way. My husband is 35 and he's been friends with my stepbrother, who's 36, since they were in college. And to be honest, they were always respectful to me and I never knew they were bad enough to do what they did to me. I thought they respected me for being their friend's younger sister, but I was wrong. To give you context, my husband's friend group dissolved when they grew up and followed different paths and a few days ago they decided to meet up again. Well, that meeting was held at my house and at one point during dinner, one of his friends started saying that my husband was very lucky that our thing worked out. And when he said that, some people laughed and my stepbrother and husband got very nervous, so I asked them what he was talking about. When my husband tried to shut his friend up, I knew that something was wrong, so I asked the same thing again. The friend told me that when my stepbrother introduced us, he told them that I was really arrogant and a loser and that someone needed to teach me a lesson. And I admit, I was very arrogant. I used to be annoying because I thought that no one was smarter than me and that they were all idiots. Well, all of my stepbrother's friends, except my stepbrother, decided to bet to see who would get to sleep with me first. Evidently, it was my husband and we've been together ever since. This happened six years ago. Hold on, six years ago, I gotta do some quick math. That means OP was 18 and her husband was 29. I would feel less hurt if he had always been a butthole because then it would be my fault for falling in love with someone like that. But my husband has always been so sweet and cute to me since we started talking that I would have never thought that he was making fun of me behind my back. When his friend said that, everyone shut up because my face said it all. I got so pissed off that I just laughed and went to our room. My husband followed me and began to swear to me that he's no longer like that, that he loves me and he regrets what a butthole he was before he met me. And even though we talked a lot and I tried to forgive him, I just can't look at him the same way. This morning, he went with me to my appointment with the doctor because I'm pregnant and when he cried when he saw our baby, I was disgusted because I just didn't know if he was being sincere or not. I don't know when I'll be able to trust him again. I want to, but I can't. Does that even make sense? Could things go back to the way they were before this mess? Then, one month later, OP made a second post on r slash am I the butthole. Am I the butthole for forcing my husband to celebrate his birthday only with me because I don't like his family? The thing is, my husband comes from a family that really doesn't know what boundaries are. Ever since they found out that I'm pregnant, they tell me what to eat, what to wear, how to act, and I can't stand them anymore. I've tried a thousand times to like them, but I can't. They're really overwhelming. I'm about to give birth, and I just want peace, and I know that with them, that's impossible. So I asked my husband to go to a restaurant to celebrate his birthday because I wanted to be at peace at home. He refused because he wanted to stay with me, so I told him not to invite his family because they get on my nerves. And at first he didn't like the idea so much because he never celebrated a birthday party without his family, but then he accepted. So we celebrated just the two of us at our house, and of course his family got mad at us, especially me because they know that it was me who didn't want them to come. But I don't regret the decision I made because it's the first time in six years that I've dared to face them and tell them not to do something I don't like. So am I the butthole? Alright, there's still more story after this, there's more updates, but I'm gonna give a super quick verdict because <laughs> this is a really dumb story, man. Who on earth wants to spend their birthday with their in-laws? Look, I like my in-laws, my in-laws are nice people, but I don't want to go celebrate with my in-laws. My birthday should be about me, not about my in-laws, what? Then, half a year later, OP posted an update to her first post. After I found out about my husband's bet, we had so many fights that we thought that it was the end of our marriage. And we decided to start couples therapy hoping for the best, and thanks to that, we were able to move on. My husband apologized many times, and we had many long talks on this matter, but today, I can say that everything is in the past. Today, we have a beautiful 7-month-old baby girl, and I'm 5 months pregnant, and to be honest, I've never been happier. 
Of course, there are days where I think about what he did, but then I think about the present and what he is today, and I forget about everything because the truth is, he's a different person now. Well, he was never really mean to me because from the moment we started talking, he was always caring and sweet. Only now, I know that everything is genuine and he's not faking it. Although, according to him, he's never faked anything because he liked me a lot when he knew me intimately. I don't think our marriage is perfect because from time to time we have fights, but for that reason, we're still working on our relationship. Because we love each other and we want this to work and we want to grow old together, so there isn't much more to say. Then, two months later, OP posted another update. When I found out about the bet, my husband apologized in a thousand ways and has spent the last few months showing me that he really loves me and never faked anything in our relationship. But my stepbrother never apologized because, according to him, I should thank him because, thanks to him, I stopped being so annoying and I found the love of my life and the father of my kids. I thought that he was joking, but he really meant it, and we had a horrible fight about it, and since he didn't give in, we haven't talked again. He only contacted me a few days ago because it was my 25th birthday. He called me, and I didn't pick up the phone, so he left a voicemail saying that he misses me and that he's very sorry. That he now understood that what he did a few years ago was disgusting and that it should have never happened. That he knows that I'm pregnant and that it hurts him to know that he's not going to meet my baby. And he wants me to be his little sister again and a lot of other things. And honestly, hearing him talk after so long broke my heart because I really miss him. After I started dating my husband, our relationship improved a lot and we've come to consider ourselves family and I was used to counting on him for everything and now I miss him so much. I want to forgive him and give him another chance, but I don't know. I've asked my friends, my husband, and my family for advice and they all told me that this is a decision that only I should make, but I'm so confused. Would it be stupid to forgive him? Am I wrong for that? Man, it's super ironic that the guys in this story are a full decade older than OP, yet they're the immature ones. I mean, sure, OP was annoying and arrogant when she was 18, but let's be honest, who's not an annoying, arrogant 18-year-old? Our next Reddit post comes from r slash true off my chest. I'm a 50 year old man and my wife, who's 48, abandoned me two months ago to find herself. The family of my wife, Mary, has a history of dementia, developing memory issues in their mid to late 50s. Her mom, grandmother, and several other relatives on her mom's side have also developed dementia. Her mom lived with us for four years until earlier this year. Her dad is dead. Our kids are independent and out of the house. Our oldest is in her last semester of college and the younger is enlisted. The last four years were tough on us, our kids, and our marriage. Living with someone with dementia is brutal. We talked a lot the last year about taking the remaining college funds, our regular savings, sell or rent out the house, quit our jobs, and travel for a year or until the money runs out. We just had to wait for her mom to move into a new home. I understand my wife's anxiety about developing dementia, but I was burned out. You lived through COVID while working remote, and a wife working remote, and a college and high school student taking remote classes, and a mother-in-law with dementia, and see how you hold up. Space finally opened up, and we were able to move her mom into a care facility. I finally thought that I had a chance to breathe. When we moved Mary's mom out, Mary's mental health took a huge downward spiral. I went from caring for her mom to caring for her. She felt guilty about putting her mom in a home and had lots of anxiety about developing dementia. Our plan was to start traveling in summer of 2024. Two months ago, I got home and my wife left me a note. It said that basically she was going on our trip without me. She quit her job, took most of our savings and wasn't sure when she'd be back. Maybe a year, maybe sooner. I knew that you'd understand. She turned off her location and my calls went directly to voicemail. I texted the kids a picture of the note. I waited one month to see if she'd come back. Hopefully before she spent all our savings. After receiving only one text in the first month, I went to a lawyer. The lawyer said that there was very little to do right now other than change the beneficiaries of my retirement account and my life insurance. Yay, my wife gets nothing else if I die alone while she's off having her adventures. Only one month had passed and there was no way to serve her papers. My lawyer advised me to keep paying the mortgage and the cars. 
The cost of trying to get a judge to approve the sale of joint assets was more expensive than me just making the payments. I didn't want to ruin my credit by letting one of our cars get repossessed, but I can't sell it because she's on the title. I get random texts from her, and she sporadically posts on Instagram, with the comments turned off, of course. I want to block her so bad, but my lawyer advised me that it's better to maintain a communication channel that's not through our kids. Her last post was from Hawaii. She put in the comments how great a husband I was for letting her take this trip. Meanwhile, I'm barely making payments on two cars, a mortgage, household bills, insurance, and hoping that there are no emergencies because I have no savings. Meanwhile, she's enjoying our trip. F her, man. I'm so pissed at her. I helped her take care of her mom for four years. And her when she fell apart after her mom moved into a memory care home. And she returns this favor by abandoning me? I'll never get to take this trip, and I have to put off my retirement. My only solace is that the kids are pissed at her, but they'll probably forgive her eventually. Double F her. I'm no fool. I know that she's hooking up with guys. She looks good, and she'll have zero problem getting men. I texted her and asked if she was sleeping around, and a week later, she responded that she wasn't. Sure. So, I'm drinking alone on a Friday night, and she's somewhere, probably on a beach, enjoying life. Triple F her. Then, about two weeks later, OP posted an update. I'm feeling much more positive now that the financial situation has become a little more manageable. Even with lawyer fees, I have six to eight more months before I have to worry about money, assuming there are no emergencies. My friend's wife gave me some good advice. She told me, don't go from being a hero to a villain in your kid's eyes. She said that how I talk about and treat my wife will determine my future relationship with my kids. I don't give a damn about my wife, but I don't want to make her a sympathetic figure to my kids or drive my kids away from both of us. I followed up with the lawyer, and basically, she said that we're going to have my wife pay back the savings she took through a reduction in her share of the assets. Any division of assets will include the savings that she stole. She'll also have to repay the money that I spent maintaining the household while she was gone. There's plenty of equity in her share of the house and her retirement plans to cover that. My lawyer said that our finances are so intertwined after nearly 25 years of marriage that my wife is going to get some share of the assets. Best case scenario is she agrees to the terms of the divorce and it's relatively cheap and quick. Otherwise, it gets complicated and expensive. My lawyer gave me a lot of options about how much I can expect to spend, so I decided to mostly just wait. I also got some credit cards, which gives me a little bit of breathing room. Now that my financial situation is less stressful, I'm actually enjoying her being gone. I'm free to do whatever I want, whenever I want. I don't have to cook or clean or take care of anyone. The house is quiet for the first time that I can remember. I loved my wife, but her mental health weighed down our marriage. Overall, she had been worth it, until recently. The first month or so that I was gone, I would expect her to be there whenever I got home. Whenever someone was at the door, or if I heard noises, I would think that it was her. I'd check the doorbell cam obsessively. I am not looking forward to her returning. It has to happen eventually, but when she comes back, I'll have to deal with her, the divorce, getting the house ready to sell, dividing all our stuff, and finding a new place to live. I'm hoping that she'll stay away until after New Year's, but my daughter thinks that her mom will be home for Christmas, either to stay or visit. My lawyer will have papers ready to serve her. Hopefully, she'll just agree to the terms and continue her travels. Down in the comments, someone asks, So, she's just gonna blow through all the money and then assume that you'll take her back and care for her when dementia hits her? And OP drops this cold as ice line. That seems to be her plan, but it's not mine. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait for an update on this one. Dear Santa, the one thing I want for Christmas more than anything else is an update to this post. Please let me know what happens, OP. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash am I the butthole. Am I the butthole for breaking up with my boyfriend over the orange peel theory? So what is the orange peel theory? I was scrolling TikTok when I saw a post about the orange peel theory, which to sum it up is when you ask another person to do a small task for you, like peeling an orange or asking them to tie your shoes for you. Both of these are tasks that you can do by yourself. The real test is how they respond to you. 
If they respond with, you can do it yourself, can't you do that, or I guess, then they're not willing to do small tasks for you and will most likely fail to do larger tasks for you in the future. However, if they do it willingly or take the initiative to do it immediately, then they pass. Now onto the situation. My boyfriend of 7 months was sitting on the couch when I saw the TikTok video explaining the theory and I decided I should try it out. Up to this point, we were happy, but now looking back on it, I'm not surprised by how he responded. I asked him to tie my hair up for me, and he looked at me and asked me why I couldn't do it. At first I thought that maybe he was intimidated by my long hair, however, he's had long hair in the past and he knows how to tie it up. I asked him again, thinking that it was just a fluke, but he told me that I should do it since I was in the kitchen and he wanted to relax since he just got off work. I know what you guys are thinking, let the man relax because he just got off work, but guys, he works from home. And even if he was truly tired, he has plenty of energy to play video games and go out to the bar with his friends. Regardless, I honestly didn't want to break up and thought that it was dumb to throw a relationship away over a TikTok. Well, that was until later in the day when I asked him if he could toss a towel in the dryer so that when I got out of the shower, it'd be warm. Surprise, surprise, he never did it. It just made me realize how much I do for him and his daughter who isn't even mine. And to think that I've fed, held, and changed his own daughter more than he has. So Reddit, I ask you, am I the butthole if I go through with it? And then two days later, OP posted an update. First, I'd like to thank you for how brutally honest the comments were. And no, I'm not 12 years old, I'm 22. I would also like to clear some things up. First off, I didn't mean to make it seem like I was testing him like a crazy girlfriend who sets their boyfriend up for failure. I simply used the theory to see what he would do out of curiosity, and I came to the realization that I was giving 90% while he was giving 30% into the relationship. The theory helped me take off my rose-tinted glasses and truly see just how much I'm doing without an ounce of appreciation. As for the one saying that I would also refuse a small task as well simply doesn't apply to me. If my partner asked me to tie his shoes, I'd be down on one knee because I feel like it's a simple way to show love. Previously, I'd never asked him to do something that I could do myself since I'm relatively independent. This was not the case for him since he uses me for almost everything. Babysitter when he goes out, nighttime nanny, chef, cleaner, washing machine, chauffeur, etc. While I read the comments, there was a lot of reflecting and I knew that I had to talk to him and give him a chance to work out this imbalance. I texted him and told him that we needed to talk and he asked me for a ride to my house since his mom was out. I picked him up and to my surprise he had his baby so I asked him if we could just stay in the driveway and talk. He told me that he was hoping we could talk on the way. When I asked him, on the way to what, he told me that his buddy wanted to meet up for drinks and I just lost it and told him to get out of my car. I just let out everything that I was thinking and feeling. He looked very confused but then changed his tune and started blaming me saying that I was waiting too long to tell him this and that his daughter is already bonded to me. She's about one year old. I wasn't sure what to do so I went home and my phone was filled with messages from his mom saying that I need to step up and be a good mom and a future wife. The thing is, I don't want to be either one. Lastly, I know you guys don't like the orange peel theory but I think that I dodged a bullet. Or maybe some of you feel bad for him because he dodged a bullet. Man, okay, this story started off as one of those just stupid girlfriend tests like, oh, if I were a worm, would you still love me? Oh, peel this orange for me. And you're just setting up your boyfriend for failure. Those tests are so dumb. So starting off, I was like, yo, OP's dumb. This is just, this is a stupid thing to fight about. But then when we got to the part where she has taken care of his own child more than he was, I was like, wait a second. Wait a second. Is this guy a douchebag? And turns out, Yes, he is a douchebag. That was our slash best of Redditor updates. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.